thank you and welcome to this session. You know, one of my friends who is also an agile coach actually joked with me when he looked at the agenda. He said, good luck, Evelyn. You will be competing with Mary for participants. And he said that one of his experience was that uh, he was in a five-track conference and uh, he had only three participants. So uh, then he said, he said the very thorough uh, discussion with the three participants, he also liked it very much. So before I came, I was psychologically ready to have around three to five. So I'm so happy to see all of you are here. So a big thank you. And today I'll be presenting Building the Agile Mindset, Where to Start. And I think that I should start the com uh, presentation with a self-introduction first, since I am not that known, far known from uh, compared with Mary or Linda. So um, I'll start with a self-introduction. And my name is Evelyn Tian, and I am an Agile Head Coach from Ericsson R&D Northeast Asia. And I started my own Agile journey in 2007 where I worked as a scrum master and later I started working as product owner. And in 2009, I started working as a full-time agile coach. And with that being said, I coach individuals from developer, scrum master, product owner, and managers, and I coach teams, whether they are development teams using scrum, Kanban, or leadership team and I coached organizations through Agile transformation. And then I am also one of the key founding member of Ericsson Internal Agile Coaching Network. And we have a group of passionate, very passionate Agile coaches and who want to be together to help each other to grow and to help organization to advance with Agile transformation. And on top of that, started from last year, within Ericsson R&D Northeast Asia, we wanted to advance Agile transformation to the next steps. And we want to have more synergy. We want to have more active sharing and learning. So last year, we established an Agile coaching team at Ericsson R&D Northeast Asia. So I have been leading and coaching the Agile team with about 18 Agile coaches who work on different products and who work in different location, uh, locations within Northeast Asia. And from uh, professional experience wise, and this year is 2013, so I have been working exactly for 20 years with most time on telecom and within Ericsson. And I have experience from product management, system, software development, integration and verification and all the way to customer support. And uh, from product perspective, for those who might be working on telecom, I work on core products, radio products, and also multimedia products. So if I use a very trendy word, I could say in a way I'm cross-functional in the telecom field. <laughs> So in addition to that, I'm a certified Scrum practitioner. I myself, I don't like to go for certification. And the thing is that when I want to present to different sites, even within Ericsson, sometimes people ask before I start my presentation, what certification do you have? So one of my friend and I, we joked, we said, let's try to pass the test for a certified Scrum practitioner. Let's see. So I did. And uh, I'm not a certified Scrum trainer. However, I do design and deliver training sessions within Ericsson on Lean, Agile, Scrum, and Kanban. And also designed the Agile leadership training curriculum. And uh, more than hundreds of managers within Ericsson took my uh, Agile leadership curriculum. And the feedback has been very positive. And uh, in, because I have very strong interest in Agile Leadership, I'm also a licensed trainer for Yugen Apollo's Management 3.0. So some of you might have read his book, Management 3.0. Yeah. And I am very passionate in helping individual teams and organizations. 
and I draw a lot of satisfaction when I see them improve. And that was actually one of the main reasons that I decided to switch from technical path to agile coaching back in 2009. And to make a bigger difference, I also try to advance myself by acquiring additional coaching skills. So I'm a, a certified master coach who specializes in behavior-based coaching. And uh, some on the personal side, I'm a Chinese Canadian, and I was born in China, and then studied and worked in Canada. I just moved to work in China about three and a half years ago. So when we're looking at the agenda, I wasn't sure whether it should be a Canadian flag or a Chinese flag that's you know, on the agenda, but that's me. So that's so much about me, and today I would like to share with you my experience as an Agile coach, and also one of the tools that we developed within Ericsson by a few Agile coaches like me to help individual team and organization to continuously improve. And first, before I start, I will do a quick introduction to the product. That th This is the first product that I worked as an Agile coach for back in 2009. And I would like to speak about the scale of the change that we're looking at. And certainly, you know, I work in Ericsson, so it's a telecom product. And we had, at that time, over 2,000 employees. And to make things more complicated, of course, you know, a um, multinational company like Ericsson, not everybody is on the same site. So people are located across seven different countries. And then in terms of lines of code, and we're looking at 40 million lines of code. So that's how big our product is. And in terms of either you speak about components or blocks, we have 1,735 blocks slash components. And then in terms of that. OK. So do you have enough picture of me now? <laughs> OK. So let's carry on. So in terms of product, uh, product documents, we have 15,000 and more product documents for the product. And on top of everything else, uh, it's a very process-oriented way of working we have been looking at. And as you know, not because I work in Ericsson, and Ericsson is indeed a very good company. So with that being said, we have very good people retention. So. We have seven different cultures to work with, and we have people who have been working with very, in a way, rigid process, in a way, for the longest time. So it wasn't the easiest journey as you could feel. And along the journey, is, you know, the moment we got started, and the more we are into the journey, the more we started realizing we are looking at pretty much changes in everything. So it's not only about the developers. You know, everybody needs to get into teams, whether you run Scrum teams or Kanban teams. Developers need to go into teams. It's a lot more than that. So when we started the journey, and we realized that, you know, we're looking at changes in everything. We're looking at changes uh, such as, you know, how projects are run. You know, we're looking at organizational changes. We're looking at also a different shift of competence needs, right? And you know, we're looking at much lighter weight processes, and we're looking at a lot of new tools, right? And on top of that, we're looking at new style of leadership, right? The traditional command and control type of leadership will not work, that we know for sure. So we know that these have to change. And then we're looking at a culture change. And you know, a lot of things about culture. So I know also, as I mentioned, we already started with the seven different culture from seven different countries, right? And then, you know, the governance model, all right? Even, you know, physical working environment had to change also. So it's like a big puzzle, and we have to work 
together to put all the pieces together. So we realized the moment we got into the journey, although we did enough in a way preparation, and we know the change was bigger than we thought. So I will be sharing uh, my experience as an Agile coach and one of the tools we have been using. And the purpose of sharing is to convey some messages on top of the fact that you know we have this tool, potentially could borrow the idea and the concept, and also some of the key messages that I, I would like to convey to you. And the first one is that we should focus on thoughts, on feelings and values to achieve greater results. You know, telling people what to do may not be the best thing, if particularly with agile transformation. I have heard either internally within Ericsson and also outside Ericsson, there were companies who kind of have to restart their effort with agile transformation or reintroduction of Scrum, right? And the second message I want to say is that, well, not to tell people what to do, and we also want to be clear and provide some proper guidance. Because we know that, you know, once people have started in getting interested with lean and agile transformation, they're motivated, they're passionate, and we want them to avoid going into frustration mode, right? So we want to give some proper guidance. And then we want to have continuous reflection and continuous ref uh, improvement, which is really the key to success. And then, of course, start being agile today. If you have been actually focusing only on methods and practices, and today is probably a good day for you to start thinking about being agile. So start being agile today. So, you know, a couple years ago, one of our top managers, you know, we are head office in Sweden. So one of the head top management manager asked me, you know, Evelyn, I have this trouble. That he moved to a new organization that has over 10,000 people. And when he arrived in his new position, then he asked his leadership team, and uh, are you guys agile? Then he got this uniform and consistent answer from everybody on his, le on his leadership team. Yes, everybody is agile, right? And then we see that very often. You know, as an agile coach, and I travel from different sites, you know, from different organizations to another, and when we ask people, how agile are you? You know, the answer is always very, very consistent. Everybody is agile, at least they think they are. And however, then the question we could ask ourselves is that, does it mean that if you have your daily meeting standing up, then you have a meeting named retrospective. Does that mean that you are agile already? You know, does it mean that as a manager, if you see everybody reporting to you or working in teams, is that just a sign that everybody is already agile, you could take a break? You know, and one of the boss that I have back in Sweden, and then he asked me, Evelyn, I give you an action that I would like you to help one of my organization to improve on their agile coaching. And then I gladly took that action. I started first to contact with the, you know, the organization. And then through a video conference session, they told me, Evelyn, we don't really know what you're talking about. If you want to come here, we welcome you. However, we're done with Agile. We were done some 12, 18 months ago. We have everybody working in teams now. So that is, it's a sign also that people's understanding, you know, of Agile is rather different. And we really need to focus more on really exactly what Agile is. And so question here, does Agile really have a clear start and clear finish? So if you look at the map, of course, it starts from Sweden, right? That's where our head office is. And does it mean they start from Sweden and somehow it just ends in China or somewhere else, right? Does Agile have a clear start and finish? 
And the thing is that it does not. However, experience told me that a lot of, think, a lot of people think it does. If I give you an example, back in 2009, when I started working on the product that showed you with over 2,000 employees, we started some pilot teams. So I was coaching three pilot teams. So after three sprints, we have this uh, big workshop together with all three teams together just to have some reflections to see how we are doing in general as a team, you know, as for the purpose of piloting, right? So normally in China, and if you have not attended any of the Chinese workshop, and normally a session as such starts with some soft drinks and potato chips. So after about 10 minutes, you know, people were eating and chatting, and there was a guy who got selected in a way as a spokesperson. And then he said, you know, Evelyn, we all like you. You are a very nice person, very helpful, and we would like to help you. So I said, sure, you know, how, could, how, how would you guys like to help me? Then he said that we're wondering whether you have a, an Excel file that contains a list of things that you would like us to accomplish that we will check it off, we'll do it for you. You know, that was the mindset people have when we got started. You know, they really think that, you know, there is a list of actions that they need to come, uh, you know, to finish, to complete, and then we're done with the actual journey. So this was the mindset when I got started with the organization back in 2009. And some other agile coaches in Europe also experienced more or less might be different but similar situations. So with that being said, you know, we wanted to do something about it. We wanted to help people to really realize what is agile really all about. So this explains a part of the reason that, you know, why we started working on the tool that I'm going to introduce. And before I start the second part of why, I would like to ask for some interaction from you. And I will be showing a picture. And I would like you to tell me and the rest of the audience, the moment you see the picture, and tell us exactly what you see. You know, the moment you see it was your immediate ref reflection. So are you guys ready? Okay, great. So let's go. So what do you guys see? You, you, sunset, okay. Anything else? Sky, okay. Okay, bear shape, right? Yeah. Anything else? Somebody? <laughs> you know, actually, you're not the only one. A couple of years ago, when I was presenting this in Finland with Ericsson, and somebody, the moment I asked the very same question, the guy said, over time. <laughs> and then people looked back at him and probably thinking, you know, are you nuts? <laughs> and then he started explaining because he saw immediately in his brain, he saw, you know, high-rise building. Then he thought about radio base station. And then he reflected on the time that he spent working on the RBS project. And he spent a lot of work over time. Okay, so that's why the moment he saw the picture, he thought about overtime. So interesting, isn't it? So the very same picture that we have very different reflections, right? We see very different things. So our brain is really, a, a, you know, a very interesting, a wonderful machine. So our brain is actually a connection machine and based on some discoveries from, our, from scientists. So with that being said, so every thought, every skill, every attribute that we have is a complex map of collections between different pieces of information that's stored in different parts of our brain and which affects the way we see things and which also affects the way that we understand the reality around us. So every time we see something new, our brain will create a map of collections. And with that connection, 
that you know we will have uh, we have all the information stored in different parts of our brain. And then so you have we have know something about our brain, how our brain functions. These you know we have to say thank you to Dave Rock, and uh, he and his uh, res uh, neuroscientist have discovered quite a lot of stuff about how our brain functions. And let's take a look at some other facts about our brain. So every time we see a new idea, the first reaction of our brain is to create a complex map of connections with bits of information here and there. And then subconsciously, our brain will be doing comparison with our existing maps that's already in our mind, you know, with existing mental map to see whether there is any similarity. So in a way, we could say that our brain hardwires, you know, in our uh, hardwares our connections. So it hardwires everything it can. And through hardwaring, you know, what it actually does is that it broadly compares, in, you know, a fraction of seconds with what we have in our brain and it literally tried to fit all the connections, the new connections with the existing ones that we have already in our brain. So with that being said, our hardwaring drives in a way automatic perception because it does a lot of approximating. So by doing that, it draws automatic perception. So that also explains why if I speak out one sentence, Again, people will have different perception based on their past experience. So that's all good about how our brain works, you know, good to know. But here's one piece of bad news. So what is the bad news? It is almost practically impossible to deconstruct our wearing. So, you know, it's very difficult to de deconstruct the circuits that we have created. And instead, you know what happens? We actually end up deepening the very same circuits. So now you probably, you know, get confused. Okay, so if that's the case, if I see somebody, for instance, we have a discussion, somebody, somebody get really mad and left, slammed the door. Does that mean every time I think about that person, I always think about, you know, he has a very bad temper, very unprofessional, and so on, because it's impossible, in a way, to deconstruct the wearing. I will draw that automatic perception. That will be horrible, right? It's particularly if you were the guy who slammed the door, and you said, oh my God, with uh, all these people sitting here, everybody will have that perception for the rest of their lives, forever and ever. That's just horrible, isn't it? And however, there is one piece of good news. It is easy to create new wearing. So every second, our brain will be creating, you know, millions of new maps and connections. So if we travel to a new city, or if we travel to a new part of the city, automatically we'll be creating new maps and of that part of the city or that part of the country. So creating new maps is a lot easier. So that's some of the uh, uh, background information I'd like to give you about how our brain works. So with this being said, we know that to change is diff difficult. However, to create new ones is a lot easier. We have probably all seen this, right? That's the iceberg model, right? And we know from the iceberg model and the performance that we have at everything is really driven by our behaviors, right? By a set of our habits, right? And then the behavior and the set of habits that we have is driven by our feelings and our emotions. And then that's driven by our thoughts and you know, our value. And we can also see from the iceberg model that only parts the results and some of our behaviors could be seen. And some of the behavior and our emotions, right, and also our thoughts, 
they are really hidden in the water. And, and as you can see from the model that, you know, there's a lot more driving that how the way that we perform and uh, that's really the foundation of, you know, of everything, which is the way that we think. So if we want to change, we want to have uh, different results, and we need to see a change in behavior, right? However, from the previous slides I just spoke about, it's pra practically impossible to change behavior. However, it's easier and a lot easier to create new behaviors, right? So we want to create new behaviors so that we could see new results and new performance. So with that being said, as Agile coaches, you know, during Agile transformation, and we wanted to focus on a new encouraged behaviors to help individuals, teams, and organizations through Agile transformation journey. And I have a question for you now. It's an interactive session, okay? And uh, this is <laughs> Albert Einstein, exactly. And he has a very famous quote about the definition of insanity. I think I heard something that's really coming right, okay? So doing the same things over and over, but expecting different results, right? And it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. And the thing we all know also, nothing will change if nothing changes, right? So something has to change. And with that being said that, you know, during Agile's transformation, we're looking at lots of changes. We want to see new performance, we want to have new behaviors, and we really need to make an effort at that. You know, it's not just about putting people working in teams. It's not about, you know, having everybody running for daily stand-up meeting or retrospective session, you know, particularly in China, just have soft drinks and potato chips and we're done because we already had a meeting named the retrospective. It is a lot more than that, right? And here is a nice metaphor that I really like. And as you can see from the reference, it's called High Performing Tree and by Lisa Atkin, and who wrote the book on coaching agile teams. I really like the tree, so I borrowed it. And this is the high performing tree. As you can see, that the root is really the value that we should focus on. And then we have the leaves, which are high performance, which are, you know, different practices. And with that being said, we want to focus on the root. The stronger the roots are, and we know the bigger the tree is. And if we give them enough sun and water, right, and then we will have fruit. And the fruit will be high performing team, high performing behaviors. So with that being said, that you know, we want our teams and individuals to have high performing, you know, go into that state. And from what we have explained for the past slides, and we really want them to have new behaviors, to understand what is the new behavior, and at the same time also focusing on the value. You know, what is the value, what is the principle that we should be focusing on. So that's the thought we have, you know, as Agile coaches, we started designing our tool. And in a way, we want to have a tool, you know, and we don't have a tool as, uh, you know, a road description document. That a lot of people, when they started the Agile transformation journey, they will ask, Evelyn, do you have a road description? And uh, what are the uh, list of expectations do you have on us, right? And we don't have, want to do that. And instead, we want to have active learning from individual level, to team level and to organization. And then we want to continuously learn from our successes and also from our failures, right? 
So then you probably say, you know, that's easy, right? We have Agile Manifesto, then we have Agile Principles. The last Agile Principle says that we need to do retrospective. And we know that it's always easier to say, and it may not be that easy to do, right? And how effective is your retrospective session? And how much learning do you have from each retrospective session? Do you really have a continuous improving trend that's already uh, in your team or in your organization? These are some of the questions you could ask yourself. And so we want to have a tool that would help our individual and organization to continuously improve and where they could honestly assess themselves to see what are the areas they're doing well and what are the gaps they identified so that they could work on their short-term goal and so that they could have go into a state where they have continuous improvement mechanisms implement, implemented. So we not only do that only once and once for all, we want to start from individual level, then go into team level, then also at organization level. And then we also want to do that periodically so that we really have this trend going so that as an organization that we continuously improve. And with agile transformation, and no matter whether you're working in a small company or a big company, and it's a lot of investment from, you know, energy perspective or even dollar amount investment. It's a huge investment. And we want to achieve the max value out of it, you know. And we don't want to hear stories where companies or organizations have to get restarted with agile transformation or because we didn't do it right the first time. You probably have all seen the Shuhari level, right? And it has been, you know, talked about very often since we started hearing Agile and Agile transformation, right? Now we know the Shu level and is when the master will explain to you, we start learning martial arts, the master will come to you and say, okay, Evelyn, you will follow me and do some moves. So I will just follow precisely what the master teaches me, right? And then normally at this stage that I don't really know why I need to do the move master told me, right? And then the high level is where that I practice and practice and I become so good with all the moves the master told me about. And then I will start maybe changing some sequence, right? And I start maybe inventing a couple of moves of my own. And then eventually I will be reaching the real level, which is the master level, and where I will be inventing my own moves. I'll be learning from my past experience with different moves, and I will be in this continuous learning mode. So you have probably seen a lot of reference to this. And I like it, almost all the part of it, except one slight note I would like to give, is that in shoe level, in martial art, normally you do not need to know why you're doing a move as such. However, as an agile coach, from my experience, I feel that it is important to do the move. For instance, doing retrospective, right? And doing practicing TDD. And at the same time, also understand why you, are, you, you want to do it. And what value potentially you can achieve. So that's the slight difference that I see as an Agile coach, the Shuhari level. And we want to have a tool to help individuals and teams and organization, no matter they're in Shu level or not, you know, that's when they are really getting started with Agile transformation. They are probably new with extreme programming. They're new to many different things. And we want to have a tool that's helpful if they're in Shu level so that they could understand the high level expectation. And I also want to have a tool to help people who are in high level and to help them to shape their way to reach their, the real level, the master level. And also we want to also help teams and individuals who are in real level so that they can continuously improve. So again, you know, we don't want to have a tool just doing assessment. We, have, we want to have a tool and looks for continuous improvement 
that speaks about uh, you know encourage behavior. So we have I've been paving my road so much to the two from neuroscience background and you know to iceberg model to Lisa's high performance trait. And so exactly what exactly it is. And the tool I'm going to introduce is called Agile Amplifier. And the first time I presented, I called it Agile Assessment. Then I have this feedback door you know, outside the conference room. Then there was one feedback and said, you know, with a very unhappy face. And the note was that, uh, I really like the content, but the moment I hear the word, I see the word assessment, it made my head spin. So, okay, and you know, I like to receive feedback so I can continuously improve. It bothers me a bit uh, at night, I kept thinking. The next morning I woke up and I saw this, you know, in the hotel you have the, uh, uh, the, the, the mirror, right? I look into it, I say, okay, amplifier would be a good name. So since then, it has been named called Agile Amplifier. And the normally it's short form to AA. So Agile Amplifier, and it's the tool that Agile coaches like me, a few of us created, and has been widely used within Ericsson. And it's used in, of course, Northeast Asia, right? That's where I'm Agile head coach for. And it's also used in North America. It's used in Europe from say Spain, Croatia, and Germany, Greece, and uh, Italy, Finland, and of course, Sweden. So it's used by different organizations across the world within Ericsson. And uh, so far, the feedback has been very positive. And uh, so the next part, I will start talking about how exactly that we use it within Ericsson. So we borrow the concept from planning poker cards, right? So we call this AA poker cards. So Agile Amplifier poker cards. And so we only have the value of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so normally how we use it in a way is similar to how teams are using planning poker. And the whole purpose is to trigger discussion. So if a few of us working on one team, and we're you know, doing our Agile Amplifier session, and we would use it very similar as if we're using planning poker cards. We will take a look at the content of the Agile Amplifier, and then we will start to, you know, giving a, a score. And then we have them all face down, and then we, everybody's ready, we flip the card. The value, the numer numeric value we're looking at is not important. What is important is that through this little exercise of playing poker cards, we want to trigger discussion, right? So it doesn't matter I'm giving a four and you're giving a one. And the key here is that we trigger that discussion to see how come we think differently and what area we need to discuss. So we trigger that discussion. And then we use that for individual performance review. I don't know whether, you know, there are so many discussions about uh, individual performance review in Agile. And in Ericsson, we are still doing individual performance review, although we have been looking into whether there are different alternatives or not. But as of today, we're still doing it. So uh, managers, a lot of managers are using it for, as a tool for individual performance review. So what we do is that you know, individual developer will look at the Agile Amplifier content for them, and they take a look, and they you know, start assessing themselves and identify the area they think that they need to improve. And they will come to the individual performance review session with their manager, and they will sit down together, they will compare notes, and they will add in the end agree on the area for improvement, and also they will discuss it in details as to what activities, what actions they're looking at. And then that will then be documented as part of their goal, part of the employee's goal in their IPM review. And so far, the feedback on this is very good, because if the developer is a very junior developer, and doing such a session help him understand 
and all the high level expectation on them. And if the developer, you know, the individual is a very senior resource, and they will understand more the expectation on them because then they look into the value, look into the roots a lot more than junior developers. And then they started taking the lead and started making a lot of influence in the organization. So that's one way we use it for individual performance review. And then we also use it for individual coaching plan for managers. So managers are doing that with their manager, you know, first line managers doing that with second line manager, and then vice versa, you know, and they go also second line will go to their boss also to do their session so they understand, you know, what is their, their area for improvement with our today's way of working. And then we use that for retrospective session. So teams will use this Agile amplifier as a tool. They look at the Agile amplifier content for teams. And they will reflect together as a team. And the most important part for this is that, you know, we need to have a good scrum master, an Agile coach there. Because I have been sitting into many sessions. And, you know, the, these sessions are so interesting that I could stay here for another two hours telling you about it. And there were sessions when in the teams, every member look at the content, they believe, everybody believe they are already at three or four. Remember I said it's not important the numeric value is. What's important is really the, the content, right? What area of improvement they identified. And there were sessions where I sat in and team believe they're just doing great. And this particularly you know, happens when the team just gets started. And they look, take a look at it without really understanding the value that much. They believe, oh, it's like, a, you know, a check, yes and no. They believe they're doing everything. And this is the time that a Scrum Masters or Agile Coach need to help them to understand and identify the area for improvement for them to realize, you know, what are the areas they could potentially, you know, improve. So we normally do this every quarterly, you know, every quarter we would do such a session for our teams. And remember I told you the numeric number, the value is not important. However, we do keep track of the number. And that number, I only I have it. I have it, I see all the teams. For instance, in Shanghai, I have 57 teams. In Beijing, I have even more. What I do is that I see the trend. I look at the trend to see whether our teams are continuously improving or not in general. You know, I'm not tracking one particular team, I'm tracking at organizational level to see whether there is any organizational impediment or not. And that's the, if there is, you know, there were, there were one occasion, and for Q, Q1 it was on the improving trend, and Q2 it went down sharply. Now I looked into it and to see what could potentially be the problem I take it with the leadership team to see from organizational perspective what are the things that we could do to improve, to help our teams. So that's another way to use it. And you know, these are some uh, ways we use it. And here's one more for workshop. You know, when we first get started with Agile transformation journey, we have all the new roles, right? We have Scrum Masters, Product Owners, and managers not knowing exactly where to be, right? Managers not knowing, you know, should I be, get close to the team? You, we normally hear the term management by walking around or gamba, the Japanese word, you know, really need to go there and see. And some managers really felt hesitant whether they should get closer or going further, right? Because you also want the team to feel empowered. And so with that being said, we have all these new things to look at. So we, have, we, we call for workshops where we have all different roles sitting together. And we could run it in two ways. One way is that if you are working as Scrum Master, you will look at the content for Scrum Master. And then you trigger discussion with product owner and manager and team. Or it I also facilitated session where we would have managers taking a different role. For instance, manager would taking the role of Scrum Master. So that you put yourself in other people's shoes, 
you see things from a different perspective. So that the whole purpose of the workshop is to make sure that we have better collaboration. We understand more, we have better uh, collaboration. And in the beginning of the cell, my self-introduction part, I spoke about the Agile leadership training curriculum that I designed in Ericsson. And I also used this as part of my training package. And this is the part that uh, with managers and leaders, we sit down together. We look at the new behavior we should be looking for and to develop. We look at that together. And so out of the session, and the manager feel a lot more comfortable after the session because they feel they have proper guidance. You know, many times people think, you know, with agile transformation, it's very difficult for developers, it's difficult for scrum masters and for product owners. And, you know, keep in mind also, it's not easy for managers also. It's a big change for them as well. So we want to help them so that they don't feel frustrated, right? So that's another way of using it. So I just shared with you a few ways of using Agile Amplifier within Ericsson. And as you know, this is a, a session that requires in, you know, your collaboration also. So next step, we'll do a little practice. And then what we will do is that I have four chairs uh, here. And some of you are sitting here already, which is fine. And we will have the role. We, we need, I need the four volunteers. And one volunteer will be a scrum master. And one volunteer will be product owner. And one volunteer will be acting for the team. Okay? And one will be acting as a manager. So I need a few volunteers. If you guys decide to stay as a volunteer, that's perfectly fine. Would you like to do that? So who would you like to be? Scrum master, perfect. Product owner, okay, perfect. Product owner. Okay, so uh, okay. <laughs> oh, do we have somebody else who want to be the manager of the team? Either way, okay, perfect. And we have another one. So what, who would you like to be? We have to. <laughs> So you are the yeah, your manager. No, I'm team member. Your team member, so manager. So I have a scrum master, product owner, team member, and the manager. No, manage, manager oh, and manager and team member. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> my fault. Okay. So what I will be doing is that I will uh, be showing some of the agile amplifier content. Okay. And assume this is a workshop. Normally we would have more people in the workshop. And now that you're by your own, you know, you're on yourself. And why show the content? And you need to think, if I were a scrum master, I'm really a scrum master, and that is this an agile amplifier content for me, or it should be for the team, or it should be for the manager. And then you guys will have some discussion, and then you will reach agreement, hopefully, and then we'll see what that result is, okay? So you ready? Okay, are we ready? We're gonna start? Okay, perfect. So let's do that. You're the product owner, yes. So the first one, knows the value stream map for the product we are working with. So knows the value stream map for the product that we're working with. Product owner, okay. And the manager, okay. And any other thought? Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Everybody should know the value stream map of the product they're working on, right? And normally we have this uh, for the part of manager agile amplifier. Reason being that it is more important for managers to know first because as of today, not everybody knows the value stream map, right? So it's important our managers start knowing them first so that they can coach the rest of the organization. So this one is for manager, okay? Let's take a look at the next one. Coach product owner for him, her to improve. 
in his her role and to closely collaborate with the team. Exactly, this one is the easier one, right? <laughs> but still there are surprises, you know. There were people, you know, before we have our internal agile uh, education program in uh, R&D Northeast Asia, and there were people who went for external training, and then somehow, it depends which session, you know, you take and from which supplier, and they came back, we'll have this session, I need to coach product owner? He is a lot more senior than me. How, how could I coach him, you know? Yeah, so if you're a scrum master, you do need to coach product owner. Okay? Yes, please. Previous one? Okay. Yes. Yes. To start first, because it's today, as of today, the situation is that a lot of managers have very narrow, narrow view on the product. So they should be the first one to know value stream map of the product. And then the team, product owner, and scrum master, everybody in the organization should uplift themselves to know the bigger picture. It's just that, you know, given the current environment, the pro uh, managers need to start first. Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. Product owner definitely also. Everybody is important for everybody, given the current situation. It's probably a little bit more for managers so that they can coach the rest of the organization. Yeah. Okay. And the next one, help the team to see their conflicts and to choose what to do about them. Scrum master, okay. That's an easy one. Next one understand the technical debt of their product and also technical debt is decreasing. Team member, exactly, yeah. So that's team member. Let's do one more before we move on. Actively seek information and analyze how the product feature, minimum marketable feature, epic user story, provides value to the customer. Everybody, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> product owner, are you guys in agreement? Product owner, and what about the rest of the audience? Do you guys agree they said product owner? Team. Okay, it's normally, you know, in Chinese we have a saying, we said two heads are better than one. So now we have, I don't know, I can count, but <laughs> so I think the audience made a, a better a choice. It should be the team because we know the product owner will elicit requirements, right, with stakeholders, with customer, and then it's important also team started looking at the value chain. I started asking, you know, what is the business value of what we're working on uh, with the, you know, about the backlog content and so on. So that's some of the example of the Agile Amplifier. And due to time constraints, that uh, will not continue with our little workshop. And so let's take a look at the uh, key messages that I want to bring. And so the key messages, as I started with uh, at the beginning of the session, so really focus on thoughts, value, and feelings to achieve great results, you know? Just don't just do it without knowing why you're doing it. And then be clear and provide proper guidance. You definitely don't want to have people feeling frustrated. You make sure people are having fun. You know, one of the agile coach I met from one of the conference, then he said he used the bar to measure whether things are running right or not. The first question he has is, are you guys having fun? If you guys are not, then there is probably something wrong with it. So with that being said, that, you know, be clear and give proper guidance so that people don't feel frustrated. And then the key to success is really continuous reflecting and continuously improving, right? And then start being agile today, right? Which is very important also. And then I summarize with 
a probably a Chinese proverb. <laughs> and I'm not so sure. People told me it's a Chinese one, so I put the Chinese and I put the question mark. But what's important is the content, right? It's not the certification, it's the content. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. And today is a good day to start. So that pretty much concludes my session. And um, I can be contacted at my email address. And uh, I also have some of my business card on, my tape, on the table over here. And if you have any questions and uh, you know, any, you want to start any discussion, feel free to write me an email. And you know, it's important that we have active learning and sharing within the company and also externally outside the community or for the company. So I hope you enjoyed the session. And uh, good luck with Agile transformation. And have fun. Thank you.